Fort Stewart, Georgia. Welcome to the summer edition of the Palmetto Informer, a quarterly look at what's going on around the South Carolina National Guard. I'm Sergeant Erica Knight. And I'm Sergeant Manuel Gonzalez. In this edition, we'll take a look at the pre-mobilization training and assistance element, the 218th MEB's annual training, and softball with the Georgia National Guard. On a hot spring day, people began to gather at Gammon Field on Fort McPherson, Georgia. Some were there for good food, others to show off hidden talents. Some just to toss the ball around. And some for greatness. On this day, the Georgia Army National Guard Wild Boars were hosting the South Carolina Army National Guard Palmetto Pride in an interstate softball game. While an event like this might seem to be all fun and no work, it gives guardsmen from neighboring states a chance to build relationships for future training exercises. Well, I'm hoping it, uh, it definitely brings us closer together. We, uh, we do some training in South Carolina, and I know they do a lot of training in, at Fort Stewart and, and Fort Benning here in Georgia. Uh, and it's always nice for us as soldiers to uh, interact with each other to build those relationships because we're, we're always in each other's states and uh, that's what we want to do. The South Carolina Army National Guard Palmetto Pride jumped out to an early lead over the Wild Boars, led by some excellent hitting and solid defense in the field. Yet the hot bats of the Georgia Army National Guard Wild Boars was too much for the Palmetto Pride to stave off in the later innings. And with one inning left to go, and three runs down, the Palmetto Pride was unable to get the hits and runs they needed to pull out a victory. In June, the 218th MEB conducted their annual training at Fort Stewart and here at the Clarks Hill Training Center. Here's Sergeant First Class Joe Cashin with more. The 218th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, South Carolina National Guard, traveled to Fort Stewart, Georgia in June to kick off their annual training. This year's mission required the 218th MEB to respond to a simulated nuclear detonation in the city of Los Angeles. Part of the training also involved the 218th to then mobilized to the Clarks Hill Training Area in McCormick, South Carolina, where a second simulated two and a half ton nuclear device detonated and caused damage throughout the county. Upon arrival, members of the 218th assisted civilian authorities in the cleanup and care of civilians after the nuclear attack exercise. Exercise observer controller First Lieutenant Jeff Blankenship critiqued role players in this exercise and says the training will prepare the guard for similar scenarios. Uh, it's just going to give them uh, some hands-on with uh, dealing with public and uh, you know, stepping out of our role players and infantry unit and into that role as a C-SPIRT unit where we're helping our own civilians, our own citizens. And uh, it's just going to help us get better at doing that. The exercise gave the soldiers the opportunity to work closely with the city's emergency responders to give them that real-world effect when assisting the authorities. McCormick County Crew Chief Paramedic Dominique Baldwin believes this type of training will prepare the two organizations to work as a team. We actually continue to train as a unilateral group together. Then I can see a lot more uh, cohesiveness between the two groups, whereas we know what y'all expect and y'all know what we expect, and we can just kind of melt together and make it work out. The 251st Area Support Medical Command aided the civilian EMTs while the 108 Chemical Company decon civilians from simulated radiation. Casualties that are here, civilian injuries, even if they're contaminated with radiological contamination, we will clean them, or decontaminate them, provide medical aid. After the 218 completed their training, they left the citizens of McCormick, South Carolina for home station and everyone with good feelings about the exercise. Reporting for the 108 Public Affairs Attachment, I'm Sergeant First Class Joe Cash. On McCrady Training Center in South Carolina, you can find soldiers participating in level two combatives. The combatives course is hosted and taught by the South Carolina Army National Guard. Currently, the combative courses taught by the South Carolina Army National Guard are the only courses available in the state. After receiving a safety briefing and a briefing on what their mission is for the scenario, soldiers line up in groups of three and prepare to move into the training area where they'll find their high priority target and several trainers giving various levels of resistance. 
Yeah, here, every one of the, um, the trainers has been through either combatives level four, level three, or at a minimum level two. And so the folks in the black suits know how to safely uh, throw a punch, throw a kick, do a takedown that's not going to hurt themselves or hurt their buddy. And with those things being said, we can amp it up a little bit more than what, what the students are likely to see in theater. So by the time they get to theater, if they have an encounter like this, there's a good chance that it, it won't have, it won't have, it won't be with opponents who are as highly skilled and trained as, as these guys are. And so, you know, if they can, if they can accomplish this mission against these trainers, then they can uh, accomplish it against untrained uh, opponents in theater. That's the theory. While the training is extremely physical and tiring, many of the soldiers relish in the opportunity to participate in the class. I would take the nice knee to the gut. <laughs> For major, I was like, boom, oh. Uh, my feelings about it, I think it's really great training. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a band person, and I feel like, you know, from a physical aspect, you know, it's great conditioning, you know, when you have to have those, you know, biannual you know, physical fitness tests. Man, it, 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 it really works you. Not to mention, you know, there's a whole physical toughness aspect that, you know, as a soldier you should have. You know, the ability to engage in enemy regardless of your MOS, you know, is pretty important. You know, I could be playing a saxophone one day, but I may have to use this another day, whether it's on the domestic side or whether I get shipped overseas somehow. Um, so I think it's an incredibly relevant course. I mean, people come out of here with a few bumps and bruises, but I mean, you know, it's no worse than going to basic training. You know, I'd recommend it to anyone regardless of their job, you know, size, you know, physical fitness, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it's incredibly important and it really kind of gives you a little bit more of a perspective of, of, about having a good toughness of mind. For the 108th Public Affairs Detachment, I'm Sergeant David Erskine. Now it's time to take a look at what's going on around the South Carolina National Guard. South Carolina's Air National Guard recently took on a new mission vital to our national security. The Air Sovereignty Alert mission makes the Swamp Foxes a critical component of the strategic force that's poised 24-7 to respond to airborne threats over the United States. And we will continue to adapt. We will not be surprised by a lack of imagination um, to make sure that we are ready to defend this nation's skies and defend the global freedom and way of life which happens in the skies of this great nation. A ribbon-cutting ceremony at McIntyre Joint National Guard Base's new facility marked the importance of this historic occasion. But history has a tendency of repeating itself. McIntyre once held the alert mission back during the 60s and again after the September 11th attacks for a short period of time. Reporting for the 169th Fighter Wing, I'm Sergeant Carl Clegg. Recently, the Army announced uniform changes that include going back to the patrol cap when wearing ACU. We had a chance to ask some soldiers what they think about the change in policy. Uh, I feel like the, the, uh, the, the beret going away is a really good thing um, because most people don't wear it correctly and end up looking like chefs. The beret, the beret is meant to be worn in a specific manner and without a lot of people don't wear it the way it's supposed to be worn and I believe that the patrol cap is a lot easier for people to manage so I think it's more efficient and it looks better when we wear the uh, patrol cap. You know once I got my beret that was you know that was uh, one of those type of things where uh, I had something to show for you know when I was when I was given that beret by a drill sergeant it was basically here here's your beret now you're a soldier so with them taking the beret away it kind of takes that uh takes that that little bit away from me. I like the beret. It looks more professional than walking around in a soft cap. Soft cap means combat to me, and a beret is like a non-combat setting. It's another scorching hot day in June for members of South Carolina's 169th Fighter Wing. But what happens when an exercise cranks up the thermostat and turns a hot summer day even hotter? They just keep on working. An operational readiness exercise tests the airman's ability to accomplish the mission in a wartime environment. The outstanding swamp foxes train like they fight. Putting planes in the air is what they do. And they do it well, even in mop gear. As soon as we got into mop 4, we just started loading them. Got to messed up our load a little bit. So over two years since we put it on, with this heat, yeah, a lot to get used to again. Of course, the best part of every exercise, especially after an hour in a gas mask, is the end. 
Reporting for the 169th Fighter Wing, I'm Sergeant Carl Clegg. We hope you enjoy this edition of the Palmetto Informer. For all of us here at Fort Stewart and the Clarksville Training Center, thanks for watching.